I guess we will start. I don't know. If, uh, not seen Matteo or Maria. Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, good morning, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good, good morning to, to everyone. Uh, yeah, I need still to wake up. Um, so let's start uh, with a brief uh, reminder of uh, what we have seen uh, yesterday. So yesterday I started to talk about uh, random walks and levy flights. And eventually also I should mention probably Brownian motion. So I started with some uh, I started with some uh, definitions and uh, mainly uh, discussing this uh, model, very simple uh, Markov model, uh, where you just have this uh, discrete time random walk, and uh, well, that means that at each time step you just draw uh, a random variable eta n, and you just perform a jump of size eta n. Okay, and this eta is just uh, drawn from some uh, symmetric uh, distribution, uh, uh, which is uh, which I chose here to be symmetric for the sake of uh, uh, simplicity. And then uh, I started to discuss this uh, Green's function, which is the, the basic object that, that you would like to, to compute here, um, which is basically the, the, the probability or the probability density, in fact. Uh, to arrive at uh, x starting from x naught after n steps. Okay, so this is this uh, this uh, this uh, quantity here. Uh, I derived this uh, an equation for it, uh, which is a recursion. Uh, eventually, which turns out to be a recursion relation uh, for this quantity, uh, which is this backward or forward or backward uh, Kolmogorov equation. And eventually, you can solve it explicitly for any jump distribution p of eta, which is probably something that you knew. Uh, and then uh, I move to the real, uh, real uh, object that I want to study here, uh, which is the survival probability. Uh, namely, uh, you will see that uh, it, will, it actually plays a very important role when we will study uh, the extreme statistics of this, of this random walk. So yesterday, I derived uh, <coughs> An equation for this uh, for this survival probability, and uh, I started. If you remember, I started from uh, the constrained Green's function. That means the Green's function, uh, but conditioned to stay positive, and uh, from the backward equation for this g plus, I derived uh, an equation for q x not n. Um, now, maybe uh, to start with today, uh, let's derive it. Uh, let's rederive this equation for q x not of n. Uh, in a slightly different way, uh, which I hope uh, it will be a little bit more enlightening. So, I mean enlightening. Yeah. That's the same idea, again. Uh, the idea is to write uh, an equation for this, uh, for, this, for this quantity, and I will write a, a backward equation for Q of X naught. Okay, so, again, it's a backward equation. That, that's, again, a kind of Kolmogorov equation, if you want. So the idea, again, is to uh, cut. So you start at x0, and uh, you want to compute the probability that you stay positive up to step n. Right? So a typical configuration will be something like that, right? So here, you don't, don't care too much. You don't care at all, in fact, about where you end up. So you need to sum over all the possible uh, endpoints here. Now, to derive a, uh, an equation for this uh, Q of x naught n, uh, it's quite useful to uh, think about it, to think about this trajectory as, being consist I mean, as consisting of a first step and n minus one step here. So you have one step here, and n minus one step there. And because you have a, a Markov process, again, these two segments here, these two time intervals are just independent. 
okay? Simply because this part here doesn't know anything about what happens just right before. Now, if you want to compute this probability that you survive up to step n, starting from x naught, well, the first uh, way to, 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 to decompose this, uh, this, uh, this uh, probability is just to say, okay, you start at x naught, so there is first the probability that I stay positive during the first step, okay? And that will give me some probability, so basically I will decompose Q of x naught n. So that's the first, the first probability that I do a jump which will drive me at, say, x prime zero. And the probability for this first jump is just p of x prime zero minus uh, x, x zero. Now, of course, x prime zero has to be positive, okay, because I need to survive during that first step. So that means that if I just, if the, the first jump is here, then obviously this does not contribute to this surviving survival probability. So, of course, here x prime zero has to be positive. Let's do it here. And then once uh, I arrive here, well, then I need to survive during the n minus one remaining steps, okay? And this probability is precisely the survival probability starting at x prime zero, and I have to survive during n minus one steps, okay? So that means that uh, I need to do this product. Again, I can do here this product simply because these two parts are just independent, okay? So the probability of the two events are the same. And now you see, I mean, I need this x prime zero here. Uh, can be anything on this positive semi-axis here. So that means that I need, I have to integrate this uh, for x prime zero. And x prime zero has to be positive, so that means that I need to integrate it from zero to plus infinity. Okay, so that's the, the, the central equation here. And that's the uh, Kolmogorov, backward Kolmogorov equation. So to solve it, uh, you need to uh, add some uh, boundary condition, boundary and, and, and initial condition. First uh, condition that you need here is that, I mean, okay, if you start at any point x naught, which is positive, obviously, I mean, when x naught is, 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 is just positive, if you just don't move, then the probability that you survive is just one, okay? So that means that it has to be one. And this actually is true, provided x naught is positive or, or maybe zero, okay? So that's still possible here. I, I could eventually imagine the, the case where I start exactly for discrete random mode. This is possible. I start at zero, and then I ask what's the probability that I survive up to step n. This will not be possible, in fact. Or that will be, situation will be different for the continuous time Ryan motion. I will comment on this a bit later. But for the random mode, this is obviously possible. And then, okay, there is another one, uh, another condition that I already mentioned yesterday is that if x naught is x goes to infinity, uh, then for any n, uh, this just also should be one. Okay, so now I would like to, 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 to solve this equation. Uh, it turns out that we can solve uh, this equation, or at least one can have semi-explicit formula for this, for this quantity. You will see how, how it looks like. Uh, but before, I just want to comment on one thing. So this is the survival probability. Now, from the survival probability, one can define what we use, what, sometime, what sometimes is called the first passage probability. Uh, so that's the first passage probability. So what is that? So that's the first passage uh, at zero, uh, at step n time step n, so what is that? So basically, uh, you are now looking at something like that. So you look at the probability of the following event. So you start at x naught. And so you stay positive, uh, say, up to step n minus 1 here. So that's, you will do something like that. And then, between step n minus 1 and step n, 
u cross zero. Okay. So that's the first time that you cross zero. So that's the probability that you first cross zero between step and minus one and step. Okay. So that's uh, what I want to call f of x naught n, and that's. Um, uh, I need to find yes, it's here. Sorry. So this is obviously related to the survival probability. And this is essentially, I mean, minus the discrete derivative, right? So if you think a little bit about it, so uh, let's define it properly. So this is this uh, f of x naught n. This is the, uh, the probability, I just write it in words, right, to cross, to cross the origin. immediately after step n minus 1. Right. So again, as I said, uh, if you think a little bit about it, these kind of uh, trajectories corresponds precisely to the difference between q of x naught n minus 1 minus q of x naught n, right? So if you compare the probability that you survive up to step n and the probability that you survive up to step n minus 1, then the difference are precisely the number of trajectories that have crossed 0 between n minus 1 and n. Okay, so that's, again, minus the discrete derivative. Is that clear? You need to think a bit about it, but that should be, uh, that should be pretty obvious. OK, so maybe the first thing to do is to try to see what happens for Brownian motion. OK, so that means uh, how can I solve this equation uh, if I make the same uh, Brownian scaling limit that I was doing yesterday, right? So basically, that means that I will consider the case where the the the, the, um, the time steps, I mean, the time between two two, two steps goes to zero, and uh, also I need to rescale properly the size of the uh, of the of the jump, of course. So I will uh, just Brownian scaling limit. You remember what we did yesterday? Eventually, I showed you that this integral equation, OK, the, that moment this was minus infinity, but it doesn't change anything, uh, that this equation here uh, yields back the, uh, the diffusion equation. OK, so if you redo uh, what we did before, uh, in the Brownian scaling limit, this integral equation, this backward uh, equation, becomes uh, becomes the diffusion equation, right? You remember that? So I did that uh, in detail uh, yesterday, so I will not redo it today. Uh, but eventually, what you get is that Q actually in the continuum. Uh, and in the continuum limit, uh, satisfies this equation. Okay, so I have uh, basically some function q, of x not t in that case. Okay, so q of x not n becomes in the continuum limit q of x not t, and you get this equation. Yes. Yeah, I don't have it actually. So, <laughs> I guess Erika will bring it. And um, so it's, again, that you agree, I mean, that's, I will not re-derive it because uh, this is exactly what I did yesterday. Now, still there is a difference here. There is some difference because of the boundary condition. Now, indeed, uh, there is some subtlety here uh, when you look at the boundary condition. Indeed, uh, for the Brownian motion, uh, you cannot uh, impose it to start at zero and to be strictly positive at time t equals zero plus. 
So that's just impossible, I mean, uh, because Brownian motion, if you want, has an infinite density of, of zeros. And in fact, uh, the correct boundary condition that you have to impose, so that's uh, a, bit, a bit subtle here, but Q of X not of zero has to be zero in this case. Okay. So that means that, again, uh, for the Brownian motion, uh, in the, because it's continuous both in space and time, uh, if it's at zero, then it will recross zero an infinite number of times before eventually escaping, right? You see, I mean, this is, the Brownian motion is typically doing something like that, right? So uh, you cannot actually impose it uh, to be uh, at zero at time zero and to be strictly positive at time zero plus, okay? So this is a bit, uh, I mean, this is one of the difference that you get with the, um, with the, um, discrete time random one. Now you also see that uh, this equation was, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, excuse me. Thank you. And in fact, okay, uh, I can actually uh, be even, uh, uh, if, if you start exactly, I mean, it's not only at t equals zero, but if you, it's true actually for all time, of course. <laughs> So you see, I mean, that this is basically the same equation that, so the equation itself is the same as yesterday. So when I looked at the propagator, uh, I showed you that uh, it satisfies this uh, diffusion equation, and that's why eventually uh, it has uh, this Gaussian form. But it has the Gaussian form that we know because there was a specific uh, boundary condition that it was basically a delta function at t equals zero, okay? Because for the Green's function, uh, you say, okay, let's, what is the probability that I start at x naught and arrive at, uh, at x at time t? So that means what's the probability that, what's the probability that I arrive at, time, at, at, at x given that I was at x naught at time t equals zero? So obviously, at time t equals zero, the Green's function has to be a delta function, x, delta of x minus x naught. Okay. Now here, you see, I mean, the boundary condition is different. And effectively, you will see that uh, the solution for q is quite different resembles a little bit uh, uh, a Gaussian, but it's, it's, it's not a Gaussian, you will see. Uh, it's basically the integral of a Gaussian. So how do I solve this equation? Well, uh, there are various ways uh, to solve it, but uh, certainly the, um, when you have to solve this kind of uh, differential, uh, I mean partial differential equation, I mean you have two variables and you don't like this too much, so you find a way to essentially recast it, transform it into a, sing a simple, differential equation, and the way to do that is to write Q or to search for a solution under a scaling form. So here you know that you have uh, diffusion, scaling, and uh, what you are doing, so in Q, Q is, a, Q is a probability, so it's a dimensionless quantity. The Green's function is not, is not a dimensionless quantity, but Q is a probability, so it's, it's something uh, which, which is dimensionless. So that means that I will just look at it. I will look under the form that I'm writing now. So that will be, uh, is, is it x zero square root of t or, or x not over square root of t here? OK, so I will just look for a solution of this equation simply by assuming that there is a scaling variable. And the scaling variable, I mean, you have no choice, I mean, in your in your problem, uh, the only scaling, uh, dimensionless scaling variable that you have is something that will be of the form x naught divided by square root of t. And in fact, if you want to work properly, you need to have, let's look at this. Uh, so d it has to be here for dimension uh, reason, and 4 is just for commodity. Okay, so I, I just look for a solution under this form. Okay, so that's, that's. Uh, for, for. Well, no, there is no, there is no special, uh, I mean, in principle, there is no special uh, reason, except that you know that here, uh, if you look at, the, at, at, your, at your Brownian motion, the Brownian motion itself is, is scale invariant, right? So that means that uh, you know that basically uh, when you look at uh, the, 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 the Brownian motion on a time interval zero square root of t, say it like this, So if I look at uh, typical trajectories, say a Brownian motion up to, up to step 
up to time t, then basically that should be equivalent uh, to look at uh, x, x t over square root of t on the unit time interval. Okay. So that means that if you look at this quantity x of t divided by square root of t, then that should be equivalent in law to the Brownian motion on 0, 1. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so that's what I mean by uh, scale invariance. That means that uh, if you look at uh, these whole trajectories on the time interval 0 t, then if you rescale all the things by square root of t, then in law, so that means they are not really the same, but in distribution, uh, there will be just the same, that will, that will be similar to the Brownian motion on the unit time interval. Exactly. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm looking for uh, such uh, a solution here, okay. So in other words, uh, what I'm saying is that basically uh, <clears throat> looking at the survival probability of the Brownian motion up to time t is similar to look at the survival probability of the process x of t divided by square root of t on the unit time interval. That's basically what I'm saying. Now, once you have this form, uh, okay, it's just a ex simple exercise to derive an equation for you. <clears throat> so you inject this form into this diffusion equation, and you obtain uh, the following equation for you, uh, which is a uh, second order differential equation. But now, the nice thing is that it's, this is just uh, an ordinary differential equation, okay? There are various ways to solve this problem, but this one is probably uh, the simplest. And of course, I need to uh, satisfy this uh, boundary condition. So that tells me that u of 0 has to be 0. So, yeah. We can derive this also for each uh, diffusion. And then, uh, at very, I mean, express the big form that your whole yellow person is breaking at very small uh, time or very small. Uh, Sorry, I, di I didn't, didn't get your question. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, wh when you're doing. Um, Right. Uh, when you're including, uh, like, uh, thermal contact between right. The things, right. That's a bit the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's precisely the same, right? You have a semi infinite. Uh, but then you have a problem because your four yellow doesn't fall at very short time. Yeah, but that's basically what happens there, I think. I mean, that's basically what I was mentioning here. Okay, but still, this equation is very well. Defined. Yeah, yeah. This equation is perfectly well defined. Okay. It's perfectly well defined. And again, uh, you have to. Okay. It's another question to, to relate it to, uh, to, the, to the discrete random walk. I will comment on that. But this equation is, is perfectly well defined. And now you can, of course, you can solve it, right? I mean, because you can, I mean, this is a simple equation for U prime, OK? And eventually, you integrate this equation. So U prime will be a Gaussian, obviously. And then uh, you integrate it, and you find that U of Z, you eventually, is just an error function. Okay, so that's uh, 2 over square root of pi, uh, integral from 0 to z, exponential of minus u squared du, and this is what we call uh, the error function. Okay, so again, this, this should be relatively simple to see, right? I mean, you can integrate this equation, you can, I mean, it's, it's a simple equation, it's a first order equation for u prime, okay? which you can easily integrate, OK? Yes? Sorry? I didn't get your question. Oh, what is z? Yes, z, you see, I mean, u of z uh, is, is this argument, right? So u is a, u is a, yeah, OK. Uh, this is, this is z, right? u, so this is the argument of the function u. So u as a simple, as a single uh, variable, it depends on, on a single variable, which I denote that. Is it okay? So that means that now you have an, an explicit expression for Q of x naught t, uh, which is this uh, error function of, uh, of uh, this guy, right? So it's uh, error function of x naught divided by square root dt4. Okay, so that's 
uh, very important uh, result for the Brownian motion. Okay, so you you get immediately. I mean, that's that's fairly. I mean, you get derived many things with that. Uh, I will probably uh, comment on this uh, later on. Uh, now, in particular, what you can get is what happens in the large time limit. Okay, so what's the probability that you start that starting at x naught? What's the probability that I've survived for a very long time? And if you look at the asymptotic behavior of this uh, of this of this function, for uh, so you need to to understand what, what how it behaves. Essentially, when um, so when t is large, that means when z goes to zero, and then uh, what you what you find is that uh, you see it, it's pretty simple. Uh, u of z goes to when z is small. So I want to understand what happens for large t. Okay, so when t goes to infinity, that means that I need to understand what happens when this argument is small. Okay, now if you look at this formula, so I, I have to understand what happens when z is small. And when z is small, of course, it goes to 0. So this in, the, the range of integration is very small. And it's basically proportional to z times 2 over root pi times 1, okay? because exponential minus u square is simply 1 when u goes to 0. So the, the result is, is, is just uh, x0. So there is a 2 here, which will cancel the square root of 4 here. And you just get uh, x divided by square root of pi dt. Okay, so there are two things which are important to notice here. The first one is that this goes like one over square root of t. So that's probably something that, that you have heard already or seen be before. So the survival probability for the Brownian motion decays as one over square root of t. So that's the probability of return to the origin. So eventually it will return to the origin, okay, because q of x naught goes to zero. And we know this is not true in higher dimensions, in dimension three. We know that the random walk, uh, there is a finite probability that the random walk will not uh, return to back to the origin. In 1D, with probability 1, it will come back to the origin. And this survival probability decays as 1 over square root of t. That's one thing. The other thing is that it's proportional to x0. So that means that when x0 goes to 0, this also goes to 0. But this we knew because we had sort of imposed it. So that's. Uh, that's uh, for the uh, for the survival probability. Then uh, we can also get if we want. If you want, you can also get the first passage probability. Uh, so that's that's so. What's the probability that I start at x naught, and what's the probability that I cross zero for the first time at time t? So that's just the minus the derivative of of, of q. I don't know if it's, no, it's not anymore on the blackboard, but this is just minus dq dx naught. And this derivative, this one is just a Gaussian, OK? So uh, let's write it explicitly. Uh, this is just x naught divided by 4 by dt cube exponential of minus x naught square divided by 4 dt. Now, of course, if you look at the large time behavior of that, it's basically the time derivative minus the time derivative of this guy. And this decays as 1 over t to the power 3 by 2. OK? So that's, OK, I just write it here. Probably, I'm not sure you can see it here. It's probably a bit too far. Can you see it here? or? No, OK, so let me just write it. Oh, OK, well, that was here. So that's this guy, right? So it's minus this derivative. So asymptotically for Brownian motion, uh, what you find, so Vm for Brownian motion, I will maybe use this later on. So this decays at, as x0 to the power t to the power 3 by 2. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so there is actually a, a nice uh, interpretation for, for, I mean, for that, uh, which one asked about this first passage. So now if you look at the typically at, at the Brownian motion, OK, uh, what is happening? So you can ask this question, right? So you look at the, 
and we probably, okay, we will encounter this again somehow. Uh, so suppose that you are looking at some uh, Brownian motion uh, uh, like this, okay. And then you can ask, uh, you see, I mean, let's look at where it crosses zero. Well, that's something that uh, can be relevant in many, many cases. I mean, you would like to, to understand the, 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 this, this time intervals there. Okay, so if you look at this time intervals here, so you would have, say, a first one here, tau one, uh, type tau two, and let's say tau three. So what it says, I mean, this formula tells you is that these tau i's here, these are random variables, okay? And uh, if you look at the, basically the distribution of these tau i's is basically this, uh, this quantity here, okay? And in particular, uh, if you look at the, the tail of the, so the, the PDF, uh, so the probability distribution of tau i is, uh, then it's something that decays as one over tau to the power three by two, okay? Which is which is basically what we are computing here. Okay. That's basically what we are computing with that. Okay, it's the probability that since you are here, okay, that there could be here even a tau zero here. But the distribution of these guys uh, decays as one over tau to the power three by two. There is a very nice property in addition uh, for, for Brownian motion is that these tau i's actually turns out to be independent. Okay. These are, they constitute what is called a renewal process. Okay. I will probably comment more on that when I will, call, when, when I will talk about the records. Okay, so that means that uh, uh, essentially for the Brownian motion, of course, we, we have a fairly simple expression for, for, this, for this quantity. Now, uh, let's come back to, the, to our initial uh, problem, which was to understand what happens for the discrete time random walk. Okay. So for a discrete time random walk, I need to solve the full equation that I showed before, which is this uh, backward equation. And this, uh, of course, is much more complicated. Yes? And, uh, can you tell the other Well, uh, you mean which method? Uh, yes, so in principle, this, okay. What you can extend, uh, I mean, this method can be extended, well, as I said a bit yesterday, uh, if you have some Brownian, Brownian motion, so for instance here, it, it was very simple. It's very simple because I, I don't have any uh, potential, right? But you, you could, I, I don't have any drift. But you could imagine that your particle, instead of evolving in a free landscape, it evolves in a, in a given potential. And then this can be adapted. You can write, okay, I, but you can write basically the equivalent of the um, of this uh, diffusion equation uh, with uh, some potential, uh, and then you can write the, the yeah the, try to solve the, this Kolmogorov equation, uh, and this can be done in a, for for a wide uh, collection of systems. So it can be adapted to many situations, but of course, uh, if you leave this again, I mean this works very well for Brownian type of diffusion, right? Because if you don't have uh, this Brownian limit, uh, then as we discussed briefly yesterday, then you end up with this fractional type of operators and this, uh, this, this becomes a mess. But for all these, uh, all systems, all the systems that have uh, a nice uh, Brownian limit, yeah, you can, you can actually extend it uh, uh, quite, uh, yeah, it's, it's very powerful method to compute these persistence properties. So you need two things. I mean, yeah, so you need to have, uh, yeah, you need two things. In fact, uh, Brownian, Brownian scaling, and also you need some uh, some Markov property, right? Because otherwise you cannot write the equivalent of the. But this backward focal Planck equation actually is something that we have used a lot. I mean, so we wrote uh, a few years ago. We wrote a big review on this on this problem. Uh, I think uh, I, you you probably received the. the the reference to it. I, I can, I could we do, we give it to you if you want. So now uh, we want to do a much harder thing, uh, which is to solve this equation in the discrete case, discrete setting. So solving this uh, is, is, is extremely difficult, uh, and I will probably not show you all the details, but I want to show you the result. And later on, we will see that uh, we can actually uh, use the, the formula. Okay, so let's see how it works, and let's try to uh, uh, let's try to uh, 
to analyze it. So this is called Polak's uh, Spitzer formula. And it's extremely powerful because it gives you uh, an explicit, fairly explicit expression. So it solves this problem for any jump distribution. Okay, so again, you, you really want to solve this equation here. So, and provided that you have this, uh, now again, you, you are back to this. Uh, to be equal to 1 uh, for x naught, uh, for x naught, yeah, okay. And you want to do that for any jump distribution p in principle, okay. So again, uh, this polax x pizza formula gives you uh, an explicit expression, well, you explicit, you will see. I will let, let me write it and I will comment. So that's what you want to compute, right? You would have, you would like to have qx naught n equal. Now, of course, unfortunately, uh, the, 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 the object for which you have an explicit expression is not exactly qx0 of n, but it's something that, so you first take the generating function of this, of this object. So that means that uh, so you take this generating function. Okay? So if you know this quantity, in principle, you cannot, you, you can recover q, yes. Yes, yes. So in this case, actually, so you see for the random walk, this is, this is a well-defined problem when you have x not equal to 0, okay? So, so you could choose something else, okay? But I want to consider this, this, this possibility where, uh, which I could not do, in fact, for Brownian motion, for Brownian motion. But here, you see, I mean, I can, st I can start at 0, exactly, and never come back to it, right? This is, this is definitely possible. Yeah, I, I, I wrote, okay, so what I wrote before is that Q of 0, 0 for Brownian motion is 0. I insisted on the fact that this kind of situation is not just possible for Brownian motion. So what I was saying that, but this is, this is specific to the Brownian motion. That means for the, when I say Brownian motion, I mean really the, the discrete, the continuous time, uh, continuous space, uh, uh, process, while here I really, I'm looking at the discrete time random walk. Now for, for Brownian motion, uh, what I said is that you cannot be at exactly at zero, at t equals zero, and be strictly positive right after. This is just impossible, okay? This is impossible because, again, the dense, when Brownian motion cross zero once, it will recross it many times, infinitely many times right after, okay? You see, I mean, it has typically, if you look at uh, a trajectory of continuous time, Brownian motion, you, if, if you just put it at zero, then eventually it will, with probability one, it will do with this, this, this many crossing, okay? So, and that, that, that's, I mean, the origin of that is because the, okay, we said that the, the, the density of zero is infinite for the Brownian motion. So again, the picture is that when you have Brownian motion, when it crosses zero, in fact, when it crosses any value at a given time, it will recross it many times, in fact, infinitely many times right after. Okay. So that's why you cannot impose this, uh, this, uh, this condition. And why should it at, uh, at the time, uh, seven of one? Well, that means that you, 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 you really need, it, it's not that it blows up, but it's, you really need to, 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 to consider it on a, on a finite, on a finite time interval. And then with, probab with some probability, it will escape from it. But you cannot have, what I say is that it's a really, really limiting procedure, okay? So, uh, X not, so for, for Brownian motion, you cannot have this and that, okay? This is just impossible for Brownian motion, okay? This is really a problem of limit. This is just impossible, okay? And that's why you cannot, uh, you cannot impose that for Brownian, for, 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 for Brownian motion, okay? So again, this, this is just impossible for Brownian motion. Okay, but for random walk, obviously this is possible, right? It's a bit subtle, but uh, but that's that's that that's how it is. Okay, 
Again, I think, I mean, it's fairly easy to understand that for, for a random walk, this is definitely possible, right? You just, because you have discrete, discrete jump, you just need to have the, the first jump will immediately uh, drive you uh, far from zero, and then, then you are done. Okay? So that's, that's what uh, I want to show, I, I, want, I want to solve, okay? So again, to have a, a nice, yeah, we need the blackboard because the formula is quite, is quite big. So the object for which you have an explicit formula uh, is, so you first need to take the, this generating function, but in fact, it's not yet enough. Then you take the Laplace transform with respect to x naught. Okay, so you compute, uh, so you integrate over x naught, and you take the Laplace transform. Okay, so I'm doing uh, two operations. Okay, so I'm taking the generating function with respect to time and the Laplace transform with respect to x naught, and this quantity has a fairly, not fairly, uh, completely explicit expression. And I, let me write it. So uh, you will probably find it a bit, a bit. Uh, probably you never, you have never saw, never seen this formula. Okay, so it's a bit complicated, but it's quite explicit. Now, p hat of k is just the Fourier transform of this. So the very nice thing is that this is true. Okay, so you give me a jump distribution. I can co compute its Fourier transform, and I inject it into this formula, and I immediately get the, uh, okay. I immediately, I get at least the, 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 the right-hand side. Now, of course, uh, if you want to get back to Q of X not N, usually you have to work a little bit. I mean, you, in principle, you have to invert a Laplace transform, which usually is pretty hard, and then you need to invert this generating function, okay, so by a Cauchy formula. So that's principle still uh, a bit uh, hard to get information out of it, but still uh, you can do it, and this requires analysis. And I will show you some. Uh, so first, I will, I will show you some application of this formula. What kind of things you can extract without entering too much into details, but still, I mean, uh, trying to show you uh, that it's it's indeed very very nice, and uh, that that you can get some nice information. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you need you just need to have a density here, and it needs to be symmetric. There are extensions uh, for p of x, which are either uh, discrete, so you might have some uh, atoms. I mean, like delta functions. There are some some extension of it. There are also some extensions uh, when you have a drift, but uh, here this holds for the simpler case where. Uh, P of X is continuous and symmetric. Okay, maybe I should write it. So, okay. So that's, uh, okay, it's, it's really a beautiful formula. Uh, it's a bit complicated. The derivation is quite involved. Uh, I will not present it here, but uh, I will present uh, some results that you can extract from it. And the first one, and I think maybe the nicest one, is what is called under the name of the spar andersen formula. Uh, it turns out that, so what is this spar andersen Yeah. Uh, lambda is uh, not lambda. Lambda is uh, disguised P. Thank you. Okay, 
So P, so again, I have this uh, S, which, which is basically the, the, the conjugate, uh, which conjugated with respect to N, so it enters only here and there. And P is the Laplace parameter associated to X naught, and indeed uh, it enters here and there. Okay? So now I want to derive this Spar Andersen formula. So Spar Andersen actually is a single, uh, single uh, name. Spar Andersen was a Swedish mathematician. And uh, he had actually derived uh, before this polaxx spitzer formula. So this is a formula from the roughly from the 60s, 70s. Uh, Spar Andersen actually had uh, a series of uh, wonderful results uh, which he obtained in the more in the 50s, and this one that I will present here was obtained in the, in, in, in 54. But he had, uh, I mean, he was really a great uh, great mathematician. He obtained a lot of nice results for this random walk, concrete results. And so there is one uh, which is, which I present here, which as we will see has many applications, uh, which is how to extract what I mentioned before, how to extract this quantity here. Okay, so I just uh, look at the case where I start exactly at zero, and I ask what's the probability that I stay positive up to step n. Okay, well that's a fairly uh, natural observable. Now what I claim is that it's pretty simple to look at, I mean to obtain this, this risk, what this guy is from this, uh, from this formula. So how does it work? So let's look at the, right, the, the left hand side. And we would like to have a Q of, of, of X naught. So, when, so we would like to basically uh, have a way uh, to extract the value at X naught goes to zero. Now, if you look at X naught goes to zero, obviously the, your, um, this integral over X naught will be dominated by large values of P. And so what I will do is to do the following. Uh, I will just first do on the, on the left hand side, uh, I will just first do a change of variable. And I will just uh, change uh, P of X, P of X naught, I will just set it equal to, to Y, okay? And uh, I will just do this, this, okay? So I just uh, do that. So D of X naught will become DY over P from zero to infinity. And now X naught is Y over P times n, s to the n, and now I have exponential simply minus y. OK, so that's, I didn't do anything except this, this change of variable. And now what I do is I take the limit when p goes to infinity. OK, so if I take p goes to infinity, you see that this will go to q0n, which is the quantity that I am after. So if I take, if I look at this quantity when p goes to infinity, it's not really a limit, but essentially I will get uh, 1 over p times this integral over y. So I will just take this exponential here. I will just take it here. And then I have this sum here from 0 to n, q of 0 n, s to the n. OK? Again, I mean, I assume that there is a good limit for this guy. So that will converge to Q of 0 n, and I will simply have a 1 over P. Now you see that the integral over Y is very simple, okay? It's just 1. And so basically, the, the, the left-hand side is just 1 over P times the generating function of the object I am after. Agreed? You don't like it? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I will not. I mean, I'm not a mathematician. I mean, uh, okay. I assume that uh, that I can do that. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, I assume, of course, that I can do that. I mean, this series here. I mean, you see. I mean, they they, they, they converge extremely rapidly, right? So, I mean, if you really want to put the epsilon here, it's, it's very simple. I mean, there's no, they actually, you can even show that they, the, the absolute convergence. So, so you, you, are, you are really, uh, everything is under control. 
So, so you have this, and uh, so that's the 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 the, the, the left hand side. Now, if you look at the right hand side. So that means I want to look at what happens uh, in the large P limit on the right hand side, okay? So here this is what it is. This is one over P square root of one minus S. But here you see, I mean, when, la when P is very large, this guy will behave like one over P square, and this, this one behaves like P. So P divided by P square is one over P, and when P goes to infinity, this is just zero. So basically, in the large P limit, this is just one. Okay, very simple. Okay, so if I look at the right hand side, uh, this this uh, it's, it's it's very simple, right? I mean, okay, I can re redo this argument, but again, uh, this just uh, is basically is minus p divided by p, and the leading term will be p squared there. Okay, so that's. Uh, uh, Essentially, okay, let's write it like explicitly. But what I'm saying is that, okay, so this is just p divided by p squared. This is just one over p. So what I'm what I'm saying is that this just goes to one as p goes to plus infinity. Okay, so that means that the right hand side just converges to one over p square root one minus s. So if you had just identified both the left and right hand side for this uh, from this beautiful formula, okay, let's I keep it on, on the blackboard. But eventually, what I showed is that for large p, okay, so this is just one over p times this generating function. And here, this is just uh, 1 over p square root of 1 minus s. OK? So this is quite nice because, of course, you see that the 1 over p just cancels. I mean, the left and, and right side. OK? And you obtain uh, this, uh, this formula that the generating function of this probability that I am after OK, I want to recover this power Andersen formula. It's just 1 divided by square root of 1 minus s. So that's quite nice, because you see that it does not depend on anything. It does not depend on the jump distribution that you have. That means that, um, so finally, we end up with, the, with, with what the power Andersen formula is. He derived it in a quite different way, because he didn't know about this Spitzer formula. There are various ways to derive this, but all of them are quite complicated. In any case, I mean, all these results are quite hard to get. Yeah, so that's Spar Andersen, OK? So that's the sum. So this generating function, and you will see that we will use that uh, many times in the following. It has many nice consequences. So that's Spar Andersen. And the nice thing, again, is that this is true uh, for any uh, jump distribution, okay? So for any p of eta, which is symmetric and continuous, okay? There is, of course, a generalization of this Par Andersen formula uh, for discrete random walk. Uh, probably I will not discuss this uh, in these lectures, but there is one. So now, in principle, OK, you can use Cauchy's formula to invert this, but you know also the, 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 the series expansion of this guy on the right-hand side. So you can immediately compute Q of 0n. And eventually, Q of 0n has this very simple form, forms, which is 1 over 2 to the power 2n, 2n choose n. OK, so you just invert this, uh, this formula. OK, so here I did not really invert it. I mean, I just supposed that I know the, the, the smallest expansion of this. And this, this, this gives you that. Maybe I can just, because I'm, I will reuse, OK, 
many times uh, I start, I mean, that's the first time that I use it, but uh, the use of generating function is very common uh, in this, uh, in this uh, business, I mean, in this problem. So uh, maybe I just want to make a, a remark which concerns what is called an, under the name of Cauchy's formula. So typically, uh, in many cases, I will not know the, the so I, I will not know the quantity A of n, whatever A is, where A of n is. In this case, this is Q of 0 n. But usually, I will know something about this, this generating function. OK? Now, when you have such a relation, so if I know A tilde of s, in principle, I can know A of n. And the way I compute A of n is via the Cauchy formula, right? So A of n will be, so that's an integral over the complex plane around 0. And I have to do this ds over 2 pi i, s to the power n plus 1, a tilde of s. OK, I guess you have seen uh, this formula. So that's called Cauchy, right? This is due to Cauchy. It's basically a residue formula. So again, here you need to, to so this means that you are integrating over a contour, which is uh, around, around the origin. And you integrate counterclockwise. OK, so that's this symbol. So here, of course, I can do that. But again, I know uh, also the, 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 the full expression for this. And so I have this, this, this very nice expression, uh, which is, which again, you see, I mean, it's true for uh, random oak, like uh, if you have uh, jumps, which are Gaussians, but it's also true if you have parallels, it's true if you have heavy tails. Uh, it's true for any continuous and symmetric distribution. So it's extremely robust result. And now if you look at what happens uh, when n goes to infinity, well, you just need to use Stirling formula to, anal to analyze this, uh, this binomial coefficient. And what you would find is that this actually decays like 1 over square root of pi n. OK? So <clears throat> when n is large, you see that you recover this 1 over square root of n behavior. So it's a bit similar. You remember when I looked at the Brownian motion. Brownian motion has this 1 over square root of t. But it's quite different, in fact, because the result that I had, that when I analyzed Q of x naught t uh, for large t for Brownian motion, it was decaying like 1 over square root of t, but there was an x naught in front. Okay. Instead, here, I have no x naught. Okay, I just, just have a 1, if you want. Uh, and so that means that the origin of these two formulas actually are quite different. Uh, and okay, we recently wrote something about it. I mean, I could give you some reference, but it's quite subtle to understand the link between the both. But I want to emphasize really that this is really, this has nothing to do with what I showed you before. Okay, so this is not for, for the Brownian motion. This one over square root of n that you have here is not the one over square root of t that we had before. Okay, these are different observables. And in particular, you see that this one over square root of n here holds again for Levy flights, for instance, which is. Uh, I think quite 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 remarkable. Okay, so these are uh, these are nice results, uh, and now uh, that we are equipped with this uh, Polak's x pizza formula on the one hand, Spahn-Andersen formula here, then we can do many things, uh, and in particular we can analyze in quite uh, I mean in a detailed way the extreme statistics for for these uh, random walks. So I will now uh, switch. I mean, find or show you some nice. Uh, applications of this for the extreme value of, of, uh, of time series, and namely the, the, the example of random walks and, and levy flights. OK. Is that fine with this formula? OK, so that, again, basically everything that you want to compute about first passage, about extreme statistics, about records, uh, is essentially included in, in this line. Okay. It's, it's quite in whole formula, but many information is encoded there. Right. So let's move on then to this, uh, to this uh, extreme statistics now. Uh, so let's see how to apply this, this formalism uh, to, uh, to extreme statistics. And in particular, uh, I have talked a lot about, I have talked a lot about uh, survival probabilities, but at the moment I, don't, I have not shown you any connection with extreme statistics. 
So I will start. I will start with that. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with uh, now really the the extreme. Extreme statistics of uh, random walks and heavy flights. So again, uh, I already emphasized that these these are sets of strongly correlated variables. Uh, simply because uh, if you look at the correlations between the two positions of a random walker uh, being a, the sum of random variables, they are actually quite uh, quite correlated, and that's. Thus, a very nice examples uh, where we can study this uh, this problem uh, for strongly correlated systems. So again, uh, I will just set up the problem uh, <clears throat> one more time. So again, we have this uh, p of eta is symmetric and is continuous. Okay, p of eta is symmetric and continuous. And so now. I want to look at this kind of of uh, trajectories. Uh, yeah. So I have, a, say, a, a Brownian motion. Okay, it starts at some point, say here, and it does uh, something like that. So if we look at it on a, a finite uh, time interval n, and eventually n will be large, but but finite. And what I what I am interested in is basically the highest value of this uh, of this random walk. Okay, so basically, I would like to say something about say this guy. Okay, so that's the maximum. I will call it capital M index n, and that will be the the the, the quantity that that I want to compute. Okay. So basically, uh, what I really want to compute uh, is this probability. Okay. So uh, the distribution of this of this guy. Okay. So I want to compute. I will denote it by f of y and n. Okay. This is not exactly the same f as before. I mean, I'm sorry, but this is a new chapter. So okay, we can, uh, this is not the first passage. So I want to compute this guy. I would like to say something about this. So the first thing that I want to show you is that uh, we know almost already this guy, because I can view this cumulative distribution as a survival probability. Okay. So there are two ways of seeing that. One is a bit uh, via formulas, and another one is just by uh, making some drawings. So let's do some, uh, uh, let's just first uh, relation to survival probability. OK. So how do, how do I, I do that? Well, I mean, let's do it maybe. Uh, uh, just uh, so what does it mean f this probability here well the probability that the max is less than y is just the probability that all the all these guys are just below a certain value y okay so that means that this probability here uh, is just the probability that uh, say x naught uh, is less so here okay uh, I will because I'm talking about uh, Continuous jump distribution, having uh, M n uh, strictly, uh, or uh, I mean, the, this inequality can be strict or not. Okay, maybe to avoid any confusion, con, 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 yeah, confusion, let's take the, the strict inequality. It will probably be uh, better like this. So I want to compute this uh, this probability, right? Agree. So maybe I should even, uh, yeah, should start at x1, x2, xn, and I started. Mm. 
starting at x naught, which of course has to be also uh, smaller than y. Well, so now instead of uh, I will change slightly the, the, the my variables, and instead of of, of uh, working with x k, I will I will work with the quantity z k, uh, which is just y minus x k. They have the right to do that. So I, I take this random walk and I just make a transformation. It has, of course, a pictorial uh, now a representation. And what does it mean? Well, you see that uh, x1 uh, large, smaller than y means that z1 is just uh, bigger than 0. z2 is bigger than 0. zn is bigger than 0. Now I started well. So basically, uh, where, where did I start? I just started at uh, z0 equal to y. OK? But we know this guy, right? This guy is just a survival problem. So z, OK. xk is a, is a, is a, is a Brian, is random walk. So zk is obviously also a random walk. OK? Because it's just y minus xk. And so this probability here is just a survival probability, right? And that's the probability that I denoted before. This is just Q of Y. I start at Y after N step. Well, that's the survival probability. And that's the same notation as before. <laughs> OK, so is that clear? Yeah, because here uh, I just, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, let's start at, yeah, okay. This is the case indeed. Uh, I started at x naught equals 0. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, there is, so I can't, okay, let maybe I just comment on that. I, I, I've not too much emphasized this, but, uh, <clears throat> so the random walk you see is just translationally invariant. That means that if I want to start, I, I can, if, if I start at x naught, then everything will be globally shifted by amount of x naught, so I can start everywhere I want. I mean, this is just uh, just a global translation, so it doesn't really matter where I start. So that's why I usually choose to to, to have x naught equals zero. But okay, in general, I should have y minus x naught. Okay, so that's my survival probability. Now, uh, of course. Uh, this has a fairly simple uh, pictorial uh, way of, uh, we, it's pretty simple to understand what happens like that. So on the drawing, let me just look at the trajectories that indeed contribute to this, to this uh, probability. So typically, that will be something like that, okay? So let's do it this way. So let's just want to illustrate this. These things which I did, uh, but let's do it. Uh, let's draw the, com the correct picture. So I want to look at the trajectories, basically, that stay below a certain level y. OK? So this is the typical trajectory that indeed contributes to that. And I want to compute the probability of such an event. Now I'm doing two things. First thing that I do is that I'm reverting this axis here. So this one, which is up, now will go down. So I just look at, just change the orientation. I'm just doing the same one or more, but I just orientating it like this. And I could even do it on the same, maybe because it will be uh, probably more uh, practical, easier. So what I do is that I just first change the orientation of the axis. OK, first thing. And since the, 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 the jumps are symmetric, this doesn't change anything. And then what I'm what I doing, I will, what I will do is just to shift the origin, and I will shift the origin here. Okay. So the origin, which, which was 0 here, I change it, and now I change, I take this here. OK, so this is my new origin. And I have the right, of course, to do that. OK? So when I did that, of course, now this is 0, and this is y. Okay. 
And now you see, I mean, okay, you need to see a little bit on the other side. Uh, the probability that I stayed below this line, well, it just translated into this probability that I start at y, but now I, I need, I don't want, I cannot cross this line here because this is the maximum. And the probability that we do not cross this line starting from y is precisely the survival probability. Okay, so that's just what I did here. Okay, when you do that, you do exactly what I did. Okay, you just reverse the axis. This is the minus sign, and you change the origin. This is this plus y. Okay. So this kind of drawing here, I mean, will be uh, this kind of construction is actually extremely uh, common in this uh, random walk type of problems. And uh, that's, that's quite nice because uh, that tells you immediately, again, that the cumulative distribution of the maximum is nothing else but the survival probability. And we have a nice formula for the survival probability. This is essentially this polax x pizza formula. So it's, essentially, it's done, I mean, in the sense that you have all the formulas at hand, and then you, you need to, 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 to analyze them and play with them uh, to extract some information. Okay, so. Let's, is that clear to everyone? Yeah? So I want to show you a nice application of this, uh, of this identity here between uh, the cumulative distribution of the maximum and the survival probability starting at y, uh, which has to do with a search process, which is a kind of a simplified version of the Shmoroshovsky uh, problem, which is the following. So uh, it's, 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 uh, let me formulate it in a rather simple way. Uh, so it's a nice, a nice application of that. Application of this, of this duality, if you want. So the problem is the following. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you have, uh, you imagine that you have a target uh, at which, which, which sits at the origin. So it's a one-dimensional one problem. It can be a reactant, uh, it can be anything. I mean, something that, uh, that you are, it's, it's really a target that you are looking for. And to look for it, basically, you have a set of uh, random walkers that are performing random walks and eventually uh, will touch this, uh, will touch this, uh, this, uh, this target. Okay, and when it's touch once, it, once it touches this target, well, the target is, dies if you want, okay? So that's, that's this problem where you have, uh, so if I look at this, so I have some uh, Brownian moons. So this is time, okay? And I am looking at some uh, random walkers. Uh, so this is time t equals zero, okay? Uh, so I have uh, a set of uh, random walk, random walkers, okay? So they 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 do they they perform this kind of, of random walks, okay? So they can, of course, they can cross. They do this. Uh, these kind of things, okay? So they start at some uh, position, say x1, initial, initial state, x2, x3, x4. And at the origin, uh, I have a target, okay? And this target is, is immobile, okay? So it doesn't move. So it has a fairly simple uh, straight line, okay, in this, uh, in this thing. So that's, that's my target. It's a target or it's a trap. I mean, uh, and basically, uh, the idea is that uh, once, uh, if the if one of these walkers touch this target, uh, then you can imagine that there is some chemical reaction, for instance, that that happens, and the target just disappears. Okay. There are various uh, interpretation of this of, of this thing. Okay. So you have this uh, capital N. So this is the origin here, yeah, zero. And you have uh, capital N. Uh, random walkers, and they are independent. And what I want to uh, to compute uh, is basically so. At some at some point, uh, the target will 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 be found or will be touched by one of these uh, one of these walkers, and it will be, and it will die. And of course, this will happen uh, at some random time. And I would like to say something about the probability of this random time, okay? So that means that uh, I will just uh, define Ps of t, uh, which is the survival probability of the target.
So the probability that it has not been touched by one of the worker up to time t, survival probability of the target. Not of the, not of the workers, but of the target, OK? So I have these n random workers, and uh, at some point, one of them will touch the target, and the target will die. And that will be this time that I want to compute or estimate. OK? And uh, in many cases, uh, it, you have a, a large number of random workers, and n is typically is very large. Uh, and I will assume that, uh, OK, initially at time 0, they are randomly, uh, uniformly uh, distributed uh, on a given segment of size L. OK, so I will just assume that. Uh, initially at time t equals 0, the workers are randomly, uh, uniformly distributed. Distributed on some fixed interval 0, L. OK? And I want to consider the limit that I briefly mentioned the other day. Uh, when n is large, l is large also, but the density is finite. OK, so l is finite. Sorry, n is large, l is large. So that's a kind of, uh, but the density is, is fixed. OK, so density rho is fixed. OK, I, I briefly uh, mentioned this limit the other day. Okay, yeah, that's true, but this will happen with base, essentially, yeah, that's true. In principle, it's possible, but it will happen with probability zero. Right, because they, they, they are uniformly distributed, so, I mean, it's clear that no one of them will be ex exactly at zero, right? I mean, if you take a, it'll, in that case, in that case, you would say that it immediately dies. Okay. So I want to compute that. Uh, and uh, you will see that uh, it's very uh, nicely related to, uh, to, 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 uh, to the maximum of some, uh, some random walks. So why is it so? So let's write explicitly what this probability is, right? <coughs> so the survival probability of the target up to time t. So essentially, you see that uh, if I want that, uh, if I want to compute this PS of t, well, uh, that's just the probability that known of the random walkers have crossed the origin up to time t. Okay. So PS of t will be simply this this quantity. Okay. So that's let me write it this way. It's just the product. From y, from i equal one to n, of the survival probability, but now the survival probability of the random walker. Okay. Is that clear? So that's for a given realization of the x size. Okay. Simply, I mean, if I don't want them to cross, uh, then it, they are independent. So this is simply this probability. And now I need to average over the initial condition. Okay. So I will average over the initial condition, and the, the average that I do is simply that, OK, you see, I mean, uh, they are just, uh, uh, basically, uh, they are just, um, I should include it, also it here. OK, so I just average over the, the initial uh, condition, and this is done with a uniform probability. So you agree that uh, they are distributed over uh, uh, this. Uh, all of them are just uniformly distributed between 0 and L. And so that means that they are distributed, I mean, P of xi. OK, let's, let's do it this way if you want. I feel that you don't like this too much. From 0 to L, uh, P of xi. 
of xi, okay? So that's the distribution of the p of xi. And p of xi, okay, so in principle, that should go even to plus infinity. And they are uniformly distribution, distributed, sorry. So p of x, uh, maybe p is not, uh, so p index uh, x, so that's the initial position of the x, is basically is 1 over l if x is in the interval 0 l and is 0 otherwise. Okay? Because they are uniformly distributed between 0 and l. Okay, so that's this 1 over l comes in. So eventually, that's just that, right? So that's just, uh, you see, they are all the same. They are independent and identically distributed. So this is, again, the product from i equal 1 to n of this uh, 1 over l interval from 0 to l dxi q of xit. But again, they are just all the same. So that's, uh, again, uh, is simply uh, this uh, this product, okay? So that's, um, yeah, that's just 1 over L integral from 0 to, to L dx Q of xt to the power N. Okay? So now I want to take the large L and large N limit, and I will do a similar uh, trick that we used before. You know, you remember probably that to get this, uh, this, this, this large n limit, uh, we would like to have something of the form 1 minus alpha over n. Okay. So I will just rewrite this in, a, in another way. We had already seen this before, right? I will write q under this, okay, this form as 1 minus 1 minus q. I have the right to do that. So obviously now if you do the integral over, uh, so I will I rewrite this. So if you do the integral uh, dx over l from 0 to l, okay, then this is just 1. And then here, this is just you agree? And I just inject this formula here. So now this is just 1 minus, uh, say, 1 over l that I displaced here. And I have this dx. 1 minus q, q of xt to the power n. So now I claim that uh, I'm ready to take the large n limit simply because uh, I'm looking at, so what is fixed here is, is, is n over l, okay? So I can write 1 over l as rho over n, okay? Yes? You mean here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here, no, it's 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 it should not be there. So I am just doing the integral dx over l from zero to l. Okay. So I get one. And now, now I'm I'm ready to take the large n limit because this one over l here is just a rho over n. And rho is fixed, and n goes to infinity. So now. I can take the large n limit, and I obtain a very nice formula. Is that OK? Uh, I would better, OK, well, I, I guess you have understood what the model is. But I'm saying that now, okay. I can take the large n limit. And uh, what you see is that uh, this ps of t now, when n goes to infinity, uh, is just exponential of minus rho times this integral, 0 to l. So now l goes to infinity, OK? So that's, uh, again, I'm taking this, this, this limit. So that's just dx 1 over q of xt. Is that fine? So now, this guy here, uh, I, I could have done that. Yeah, OK, I put a t, but OK, this, this is, can be a discrete time, right? I mean, we did, we, I didn't do anything here. Uh, what, I'm say, what I want to, to, to say here, uh, or to show you, convince you, show you, that this is just the average value of the maximum after time t. Uh, 
of the maximum on zero t. Okay. It can be discrete or, or continuous. I mean, uh, that's the same. I mean, the rezoning all the same. So is that clear? Yeah, it's clear because uh, we have seen that. Uh, I mean, okay, I, I answered a bit quickly, but uh, uh, this Q of X T it's a survival probability. Okay, but we have also seen that that this is being a survival. This is actually the probability that the maximum m of t is less than x. Okay, we have seen that before. I just showed you this uh, this argument. So now uh, I claim that this is true, and this is just the result of an integration by parts. So how does it work? Uh, let me write what is m of t. Well, if I want to compute m of t, in principle, uh, I will need to do the integral from 0 to infinity dx of, say, x times the PDF of the maximum. And the PDF of the maximum is just the derivative of this quantity. Right, so, okay. I write it, and I hope you will like it. Okay, so I claim that this is just that. So is, 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 is it clear to you? Exactly. That's just the first moment. Exactly. So that's the point. So Q of xt is a PDF, is a CDF, cumulative distribution. So the PDF is just dq dx. OK? So dq dx is just the PDF, essentially the probability that m of t is equal to x up to the x. And then I just need, if I want to compute the average, I just need to compute the first moment of this distribution. OK? So now you see, I mean, uh, if you do it by parts, so if you do an integration by parts, you just immediately uh, obtain, obtain that, right? So what I mean by that is that, uh, so how do you do this by parts? Uh, so you will take u. Uh, so you will basically write that uh, u is x and u prime is just 1. And then you take dq, sorry, v prime is equal to dq dx. So in principle, uh, in principle, that can be um, uv, yeah, uh, that, that can be uh, q. Uh, but in fact, q uh, is not converging when x is large. So actually, you, you add a constant to it. You have right to do that. OK? And if you do it by parts, uh, you see that uh, there is a first term, which is, uh, in, which is q times q of x t minus 1. And you want to evaluate it in between x equals 0 and x equals plus infinity. But this will be 0 at x equals 0. This will be 0 at x equal to infinity because of this guy. And you are left with minus this guy, which is plus integral from 0 to infinity dx 1 minus qx. Okay, I mean, I'm doing it a bit quickly, but this, is, this should be related. Probably you have already seen this kind of identity, right? So this is 0, and this is precisely that. Is it clear? No, there is no. Okay, so this is 0. And so you arrive at this very nice, uh, very nice uh, result that uh, the survival probability is simply exponential of minus rho times the average value of the maximum. Okay, so that's quite nice uh, application of this of this uh, identity yes right uh, what uh, would be the result for iid random variables so what do you mean by random variables iid in this case
the maximum that I not to touch the target that I, I suppose it is not working. I mean, we cannot apply what we've seen at the beginning because we, we have so many already. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yes, yes. In case of IID, I mean, here I didn't say anything about what the process is really, right? Okay, if you give me, if you give me some, now I mean, okay, uh, I used, well, I used some fact, I mean, which probably is not, I mean, I cannot translate for IID. Uh, I already, I mean, the notion of survival probability doesn't really, it's not very clear. Uh, okay, we might be able to give a sense to it, but okay, it's not, I think it should be probably not very natural, I would say. Yeah, I assumed already that I had a sort of stochastic process behind. Okay, so now the question is, how do you get this? Uh, so this this should give us some motivation to compute this uh, uh, this maximum, right? So uh, eventually, what we have shown is that for large n, so question now is, uh, how do you get? How do you get this m of t? So p s of t is uh, exponential of minus rho uh, m of t. Okay, so just a remark here. Uh, t can be continuous or real, actually. Uh, continuous. Uh, discrete. You see, I mean, here I didn't didn't do anything. T can be discrete or continuous, right? So that means I can have. You can use this thing and 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 for for Brownian motion, for instance, if you think about it, uh, for Brownian motion. But t can be uh, continuous. And in this case, we have already the result. I mean, okay, I've not derived it in detail, but we have uh, the result. Uh, M of t will be proportional to, to square root of t, actually. But we will do it in a more, I mean, in a different way. It can be continuous or discrete. Okay, so. Okay. Now, the question is, how do I get it? Okay, how, how can I compute that? And that's the, the, what, what, you know, what you want to do now, okay? That's the, that's the next question. Is that the question is uh, how, how, how can I get this guy? Well, uh, in principle, we have uh, many tools to, to, all the tools to get it. Uh, and as I said, uh, everything in principle is contained in this uh, Olax X pizza formula. Okay. So let's try to play a little bit with this formula. I will, I guess, uh, not... Um, show you all the details, but uh, at least I want to show you a bit how one can, uh, uh, how one can get something uh, out of it. Okay? So let's try to see, I want to show you how this information is contained in the, in the, in the Polax X pizza uh, that, uh, that, that, that we have seen. Okay. So that uh, will be uh, the first, I mean, the, the, that, we will see how we can compute uh, computation of this uh, of this guy. So now I, I will just I, I insist on having n here to insist on the fact that I have a discrete. Okay. So that means in this case t equal to n. Okay. And this is this will be this this will use the uh, the the Polax X pizza. Okay, so it's a bit technical, but uh, I, I want to show you really that, that uh, some information can be extracted from, from this formula. So how does it work? I mean, it's relatively elementary, but one has to, uh, one has to, um, yeah. So how do I do that? So you remember that uh, the Polax X pizza formula uh, gave me information about this generating function, uh, so this PS formula, okay, so it gives me uh, something about this, this guy. So, and this guy is actually uh, the following, dx naught, sum over n, s to the n, q of x naught of n, Exponential of minus p x naught. Okay. So uh, I want to extract some uh, information about the moments of 
the distribution, okay? So Q is the full, is a CDF, but I would like to say something about the moments, right? I mean, that's what I am after here, yeah. okay? So maybe uh, I should uh, say, so immediately you see what, what, what you would like to have is an information about, okay, MN is what precisely in terms of this, of this Q? We have already seen it, but uh, what I would like to have is an information about this quantity here. So that would be dx, x, dq, dx. Okay, that's that's what I would like to to to, to compute, right? So you see that uh, again in this formula, I will do some integration by parts to obtain a nicer expression. Uh, um, to um, so I will consider the, the 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 integral over x naught, and I will do some integration by parts again. Okay. So I do it by parts again just to have it in a sort of uh, nicer way. So this time, again, I know what I have to do. Huh? I will just uh, in, I mean, take the derivative of this, q of x naught, uh, and that will be q prime of x naught. And the other guy, well, I need to integrate it, OK? Exponential minus p of x naught. Uh, v is just uh, minus 1 over p, exponential minus P of x naught, okay? So now uh, I'm saying that uh, I can rewrite this integral dx naught qx naught minus px naught. So what it is, uh, it is simply the, 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 the following. So uh, this is just uh, Yeah, why did I do that? Uh, let me see. Yes, okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. So, um, okay. So I just uh, have a first term, then it will be minus 1 over p. So I will get q of x naught n exponential minus p of x naught. Uh, and I need to have it between 0 and plus infinity, okay? And then uh, I get what? I get plus 1 over p uh, times the integral from 0 to infinity dx naught uh, q prime of x naught exponential of minus p x naught. All right? So now I just uh, I just uh, look at so the value at uh, plus infinity, but when x naught goes to plus infinity, this goes to one and this goes to zero. Okay, and now here I have uh, another term at zero. At zero, still it's uh, there is some non-trivial value, and uh, this value is just uh, uh, one over p uh, q q of zero n. Okay. And then uh, you get uh, you get this, right? So you get this. Uh, uh, okay, so what is that? It's just 1 over p uh, dx naught. So okay, this you see, I mean, you can still write it in a, in a slightly different way. Uh, now q prime of x naught is the PDF, okay? So that's just, uh, basically, that's just, uh, I could write it as exponential of minus p of mn. Okay? And that's a reasonable way uh, of, of, of writing that. Is that okay? And I have uh, one over p in front. Right. So, that tells me that uh, now I have uh, another way of writing of writing the things, and then from it I will be able to uh, I will be able to compute uh, values and moments uh, if I want. <coughs> so, so how does it work? Um, so it works in the following way. So I will have then that. Um, so this guy, so Polak Spitzer. 
Okay, so I will now, and I will, I have to restore the, the, the sum here, okay? So I will have a first term, which is 1 over p sum uh, from n equal to 0 to plus infinity, q of 0 n s to the n. But this guy we know, right? This is the spa Anderson. And then I get another term from which I will be able to get uh, the other, I mean, the rest of the information. And this is simply exponential of minus p. And then, okay, and then, uh, of course, of course, I take the, the sum from n equal to 0 to plus infinity, now s to the n. Okay? That's fine. So now, Polak's x pizza tells me something about, about this, this whole thing, right? Because we know this has this form. So you see basically why I did that. Uh, now, by expanding in powers of, of p, you will get all the moments of mn. Okay, so if I start to expand this uh, in powers of p, uh, then uh, you will see that I can generate all the moments. This is the generating function, right? So that's why I like it, because this is just a sum from k equal to 0 to plus infinity of minus 1 to the k, uh, p to the k divided by factorial k of mn to the k. Okay, so... Now, I, just, I will just have to identify on the right-hand side, I will have to identify the powers of p's, and I will be able to read the moments that I am after. In fact, here I'm just looking at the first moment, so that will be pretty simple. But uh, eventually, what you get is the following. So we know that this is equal to, uh, from Polak's pizza, we have this, and we know that this is equal to 1 over p, 1 over square root of 1 minus s, times this exponential, okay? So that's, and let me write it properly. <coughs> uh, okay, this is exponential minus p over, over pi times this integral. dk uh, of log y minus s p hat of k uh, divided by p square plus k square dk. Okay. And that's fine. I already the dk. Okay. So you see that the one over. So that's that's my formula. Nice. So now this guy I know. You remember? I mean that's that's just the spa Anderson formula, and I can just uh, simplify it by p. So. Now, this is what I am after, so I will just write it in the following way. So I have the sum from n equal to 0 to plus infinity exponential minus p of mn s to the n. And then this is equal to what? So what, I'm, what I claim, this is what I, we have computed before, right? I showed you this, uh, this very nice par Anderson formula. So it, it comes simply with a 1 over square root of 1 minus s. So you see that at the end of the day, well, the formula is not that bad. It's just this exponential yeah, uh, of uh, minus p over pi. Uh, and then we have the sum the integral dk log of 1 minus s p hat of k divided by p square plus k square, so that's the first in the exponential, and minus 1. Okay, so that's, of course, a little bit cumbersome. But what is nice is that now, in principle, I can get any moments that I want. Okay, so let me call this, uh, let me call this uh, big function here uh, phi of p and s. So what I claim is that I can get anything in terms of this. Yes? That's true. Yeah. So here, I mean, I, I just, so eventually, I, I, I did, uh, that's true, I mean, to derive the, 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 the spar Anderson formula from the, the polacek spitzer I did this trick where I rescaled uh, uh, and 
the, the, the variable x naught and eventually take the limit p. That's true. But the final result was a result for this, right? The final result was simply a result for this series. So here this is another another problem. Okay, and I just used the, the, the formula for this for this quantity. There is no more p there if you want. Okay. Is that fine? So the, the, the final real is power power. I, I use this, this this trick of large p, but now okay, this p is another p if you want. Okay? Eventually, the result of Spar Anderson is just this identity, and that's what I use here. Okay. So now you have this, and uh, let me just uh, finish with that. Now what I'm saying is that uh, I have this identity, and from it I can derive anything I want. In particular, I want the first moment, and I'm saying, and I just how how do I get the first moment? Well, it will be relatively simple because you take this formula here. Essentially, and what you do, what you will do is just uh, to take a derivative with respect to p. Let me take the derivative with respect to p and take p equal to zero. Okay, so if I consider this formula, I can just uh, write. Uh, okay, let's let's do it uh, explicitly if you want. If you have never seen that, so how do I get the? So I have a nice. Uh, I have the generating function of the, uh, the this exponential. So what I'm saying is that I want to do the minus ddp of this of this formula from some n equal to zero uh, exponential of minus p ddp of that. Okay, s to the n. Now if I do ddp, well, it's pretty simple, right? I mean, uh, this is just an integral, so that will be just the sum from n equal to zero, uh, and I will get basically mn exponential minus p mn s to the n. Agreed? OK, I assume that I can take the derivative under the sums, etc., etc. But now, uh, if I take p equal to zero, well, then you are done, right? Because if I, if I evaluate this at p equal to zero, uh, that's evaluating this at p equal to zero, and that's just the generating function of what you are after. So that's how it works. And if you would like the, the higher moments, then you would take higher order derivatives. Okay? If I want to have, for instance, mn square, then I would simply need to take the second derivative with respect to p, and essentially you can get anything you want this way. So that's what you are. That's what you need. And then, of course, due to uh, Polaxx pizza, you know what this quantity is. Okay. So, so from Polaxx pizza, it's a bit, com I mean, complicated. I will probably not analyze it in detail, except if you, if you ask me to do that. But uh, then it's just minus d d rho of this function. Okay. <coughs> Evaluated that. Sorry, it's not a rho. It's a p phi of p s evaluated at p equals zero. And this you can compute. OK, so that's how we use this Polaxx uh, pizza formula here uh, to, compute, uh, to compute this expectation value. And what is nice, again, is that here you have a formula for any kinds of germ distribution. Okay? So you can just do the, 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 the full uh, computation um, yeah, quite easily. Maybe one thing that well, I can already uh, comment on is that, uh, well, it's obvious that, okay, this, this formalism is relatively heavy. I mean, it's, it, it, it's quite demanding in terms of uh, analytical efforts uh, to, to get explicit results. Uh, but it's also the signature of the fact that, uh, of the fact that uh, when you look at this extreme, I mean, as, uh, at strongly correlated variables, uh, at some point, of course, you have to pay it, uh, and the, 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 the price to, to pay is indeed to, to, to play with this uh, uh, pretty involved formalism. Uh, but still, I mean, here you see, I mean, things are pretty explicit. And of course, uh, playing with this formula is then a kind of art. I mean, I mean, it's, it's not something that, uh, uh, that you learn uh, like this in, in, in one hour. Um, but uh, at least I think it's important that, that, that you know, I mean, that this, this formula here, uh, and they are quite useful. Uh, they can be quite useful in many, in many contexts. Okay, so 
probably last time I will end up this, okay, I will not, if you wish, I mean, I could do the explicit, the explicit computation of all that. I think I would just give you the, the main steps. Uh, and then I will go to, um, I will discuss then the full distribution of the maximum. I mean, with a, mainly focusing, in fact, on the, on the Brownian motion. Um, and then, then, actually, I was thinking of the following. Uh, so initially, my plan was like this. Uh, my initial plan was to uh, okay, treat this uh, extreme value statistics for, for the random walks. And then I wanted to go to the to tweet no, to discuss the record statistics uh, first for IID and then for Brownian motion, and then I wanted at the end I mean to discuss some uh, uh, other examples where you you can say something about the extreme statistics. So in some sense, coming back to extreme statistics for strongly correlated variables, and I wanted to discuss at the end these questions about RMT. But okay. Uh, after thinking a bit about it, maybe I, I thought that uh, after finishing discussing the, the discussions of the extreme statistics for uh, random walks, maybe I can I could just discuss the, the random matrix uh, uh, at that moment. I mean, making a little break with random motion and random walks, maybe uh, that will okay, also be a bit of distraction. Uh, and then uh, eventually I will come back to record statistics, which is sort of new subject somehow, uh, new subject partly disconnected to this, um, and so, so that, that would be my plan. So that, that, that means that I would like to shift maybe the random, some words about, I will not do a, a course on random matrix, of course. Huh? That, that would be just uh, to show you some nice application of extreme value questions in RMT. So this is a quite limited subject. Uh, and I think it fits well in this uh, discussion of uh, extreme statistics of strongly correlated variables, and I thought maybe something that you would also find useful, I mean, for many of you, I guess. Random matrix, I mean, uh, can be useful for many, many, many things. So I, I thought it, 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 it's fair, fair enough or interesting enough to do it uh, after this, the, these things. What do you think? Does it sound okay? Yeah. Okay, so I, I will do that then. So, that, so that, that means that next time I will finish to discuss a uh, few things that, that, that we can extract from this polar x formula, and then I will start a bit on, on, on RMT.